The Australian space sector is expected to be worth some $12 billion by 2030. This is being propelled by the significant investment required in satellite communications to deliver the masses of data driving the Internet of Things. Australian space company Fleet Space has designed, built and launched the country's only commercial nano satellites and is building a constellation of 140 small satellites in low Earth orbit. To tell us more, we're joined by CEO and co-founder Flavia Tata Nadi. Flavia, welcome. Tell us a little bit about Fleet Space Technologies after your first six years in this rapidly growing industry. Thanks for having me and thanks for this interesting topic. Uh, my life in the past four or five years has been absolutely a growth uh, trajectory towards the moon, indeed. Uh, I'm, I started founding Fleet six years ago. Now, actually, Fleet is a six-year-old company based in Adelaide, in, in South Australia, and is the biggest space startup in the country. That is incredible, starting from two, two people in a dream uh, mm. to almost a team of 100 people, seven satellites in the sky, and customers all around the world. Um, we started with a vision to deploy a constellation of many, many satellites, very advanced, to provide communication services to, to, to all the world, to connect everything, to connect industries, to connect the, the remote part of, of our planet. Uh, now we have launched, South, not just South Australia, but Australia, most satellites that are small satellites, they are as big as more or less a pizza box. <laughs> and they have the same capabilities of a very, very big satellite. Um, the space industry is growing really, really fast. And so the satellite industry is becoming just just very different from what we, we used to see, like, you know, big corporate or big government building one big satellite, taking 10 years and billion of dollars. Now you've got startups, high-tech startups, mass manufacturing satellites in very special ways. So Fleet, for example, is the only company in the world that is 3D printing the entire satellite. So we 3D print antennas, we 3D print structure. Our idea was like, how can we be fast a mass manufacturing satellite? And we needed 3D printing. Um, it's, it's a different word compared to 20 years ago. But what you need to think is what happened to the, to the world when you can actually build an infrastructure in space that is so... Um, so economical and so big, you can connect all the things on Earth. That's 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 what's interesting. Mm. Now you've done three launches with with SpaceX. Where are you launching your satellites from? <laughs> so SpaceX has changed the way we reach space, and I think every single person on Earth knows that. They they yeah, we build satellites. We we pack them, we ship them to Cape Canaveral in US, and they get part of most of SpaceX launches. Um, SpaceX now has built a rocket that doesn't just land, as everyone knows, but I can put my satellite in the sky for a fraction of the price that I was used to spend just four years ago. It's like 10 times cheaper. So it really allows me to put satellites in the sky, uh, probably like an Uber. We book it, we put it up, and they go into space. That is a kind of a different deal compared to putting billion dollar satellites maybe once a year in space. Now, literally, we can fly every two weeks. Now, now, you talked about your factory in Adelaide, and this is actually the first dedicated space manufacturing hub. It's, it's called the Australian Space Park, um, and it's actually backed by the South Australian government as well. What is this going to be used for? Is it essentially the manufacturing hub for building and putting together your, your satellites? Correct. So the Australian Manufacturing Park is going to be a very big 30,000 manufacturing park of space. There, is, there are several companies, not just we, we have four companies. So this is what it makes it really futuristic. So we are going to mass manufacture our satellites. Uh, there's going to be a rocket company, mass manufacturing rockets, flying car companies, and a quantum computing company. It doesn't get more futuristic than that. The reality is that each of us are really working in a, in a, in a chain to provide services on Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the park is going to be live in, uh, in, in less than a few years. 
And uh, it is going to be the first satellite and manufacturing space, manufacturing park in the Southern Hemisphere. So we should be very proud. Oh, you should be very, very proud. Now, you know, you talked a little bit earlier about 3D printing and, and you've recently formed a partnership with Konica Minolta to implement 3D system printers. What's the timeline around when your first 3D printed satellite will actually go to space? We got, now got three or four satellites with 3D printed parts in space. And now we bought a much bigger much bigger 3D printer is is a millions of dollars, very big. It's probably as big as a bus, and it's a metal 3D printer that can start 3D printing all our satellites one after the other. And it's just not going to be the first one. We're going to have many. Mm -hmm. So we looked at the best technologies in US to 3D print metal. We actually use some of the, the Australian companies, and we are look, even looking at Japanese companies 3D printing electronics that is the next frontier. Mm. Mm. Now, now, you're also using other types of technology, obviously, to provide to, to make these satellites, and you're using titanic kinetic fusion technology to provide radiation shielding. Um, for the layperson out there, including myself, what is this technology and how does it work? In space, our satellites are bombarding with radiation, and they need to last and they need to keep moving. So. Uh, all this material science that is very complex, this is bringing 3D print to the next level. So Titanic, that is one of the most successful, successful Australian story, you know, it started 3D printing titanium, for example, or started using new technology to 3D print very specific material. Um, Flavia, what can we expect from Fleet over the next sort of five to ten years? I mean, what, what does the <laughs> sector look like if we look ahead to that? So the sector is growing incredibly worldwide. It's, a, it's an eco ecosystem that is, that is growing in an exponential growth, and that's exactly where it should be. You know, unlike the richest people on Earth are space entrepreneurs. That is fascinating. So we need, live in a time that that's the case. Fleet is going to launch 200 satellites in the coming years, probably in just in the coming six and seven years. We are providing services... Uh, to almost all the country in the world, you know, uh, we allow um, looking for deposit of lithium and copper and critical minerals. So we serve the biggest problems of the world. Like we big believer in fighting climate change and energy transition, electric cars, and we are trying to use technology to solve this, to solve the biggest problems. And the first one that we are tackling is finding deposit of lithium, copper and nickel all around the world without dam damaging Earth. That is a very interesting topic, and we use our satellite system for that. So I really hope the next five years, Fleet will keep hiring. We are, uh, we're planning to hire 100 or 150 people. Having these satellites mass manufacture, but serve, really serve and give services to the, the explorers of the world that want to find uh, the fuel, but not any more fuel, to help the world to become a better place. So by helping finding new deposits, I think we're going to help solve one of the biggest problems the Earth is facing right now. How can we um, move to renewable energy, to electric cars, to solar panels, um, having the critical minerals that we need without drilling all Earth? And incredibly enough, space is coming to the rescue. So space is coming to the rescue to do ultrasounds on Earth in the surface surface. That is... Very bizarre to think about it, but that's what space is all about. You know, with space technology, we can see Earth from the top. And when you see Earth from the, th the top, it's unlimited what you can achieve. You know, you can even help everyone to look uh, uh, at the core of Earth. This is how incredible it is. So I really look forward to all this incredible impact that we'll do in the next 20 years with space tech. It is incredibly exciting and we'll be watching uh, Fleet Space very, very closely, Flavia, to watch your progress. Appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for joining us here on the APAC Network. Hey, thanks for having me. Flavia Tata Nardini with us there, CEO and co-founder of Fleet Space.